All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power, and I've got some very interesting stories for you guys today. The first story is actually a men's physique story, um, but it's not going to be one that disappoints you guys. This one's a pretty interesting story. So Andre Ferguson, um, who's a top men's physique Olympia competitor, he took second at the 2017 Mr. Olympia. He took fifth at the 2018 Mr. Olympia, and he won back-to-back -back Arnold Classics in Columbus, Ohio in 2018 and 2019 in the men's physique division. So this guy is really one of the elite, best of the best men's physique guys. Now, the story today is about him getting in a fight outside of his home gym. Um, so this was a pretty interesting story. I had a lot of people sending me um, these videos here. Where I guess this guy at his gym wanted to fight him. The police ended up coming after what you see in this video here. Um, and I guess the police apparently said he didn't break any laws. This was called mutual combatants because they both wanted to fight. It was an assault. Um, but from what I understand, he was possibly banned from his home gym for this incident. So a lot of people sending this to me were like, oh man, this is very unprofessional. This is immature. You know, he shouldn't be representing the men's physique division like this. But honestly, if someone calls you out and wants to fight you at the gym and you got to defend yourself, I mean, I see no problem with this. This wasn't a scenario where Andre just attacked this guy. It seems like this guy was really instigating it. This guy wanted to fight and Andre defended himself and just happened to kind of beat the guy's ass in the process. So that was, you know, that was good. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and roll that full video for you guys right here so you guys can get a better idea of what exactly happened. Yes, people, the footage has surfaced. Now, y'all going to see how easy a work this shit was. Y'all going to see how I let him up, all that shit. Y'all going to even see how I, I, I literally was like not trying to kick this kid's ass, but hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, update, y'all. So I'm either suspended or revoke from the gym to I talk to the owner, Steve. My shit is suspended right now, or whatever. Now, if I would've known I was getting my shit suspended or revoked, I would've stomped this kid's face in yesterday. And the only reason why I didn't is because I didn't want to get my shit revoked. It's my home gym, and I go there twice a day every day. It's up the block. But, yo, if my shit gets revoked, next time I run into this kid, I am going to fuck him up royally. I'll let y'all know that right now. So stay tuned. World star! Easy work, man. <laughs> but look, the best part of the video is how I had him snatched up by his mug, though. <laughs> now, anybody that knows me, man, I don't get nobody full mounted and get off him until they beat into a pole. <laughs> like, I showed this kid mercy like three times. I even walked away from him. <laughs> it should have just funny, man, because it was such. All right, so the next story, Sean Roden kind of uh, claps back at all the criticism that he's gotten over the guest posings that he's done. Obviously, the most noteworthy of those guest posings being the 2019 Pittsburgh Pro, pretty much the biggest pro guest posing of the year. All the top Olympia guys are always there. It's a very big deal. Sean Roden did this guest posing, and many people felt he didn't really look that great, certainly not compared to the other guys that showed up like William Bonac, Brandon Curry, Rolly Winkler. Um, and by comparison, Sean didn't look that good. And he received a lot of cri criticism for this, not only from fans online, but also from other Mr. Olympias, other former IFBB pros. Um, Sean, Sean Ray and Jay Cutler come to mind. Sean Ray being pretty much the most ruthless that I saw um, as far as really just beating down on Sean for this guest posing. Sean Ray saying some pretty interesting things in his interview with Dave Palumbo of RX Muscle saying that Sean Roden was an embarrassment for showing up like that, saying that's not how Mr. Olympia should represent himself and Mr. Olympia should have looked better than that or said no to the guest posing or made up some kind of excuse not to be there, um, or done anything to not look like that on stage. And Sean, Sean Ray really came down hard on Sean Roden. Um, and, you know, some other pros did too, and a lot of fans did as well. So Sean Roden did this interview with NPC News Online's Frank Seppi where Sean addresses kind of all this criticism. And, and Sean says some things in this interview that I really respect. Um, he talks about the fact that, number one, 
he's been competing since he was 17 years old and he's 44 now. So he makes the very good point that he, you know, he knows what he's doing. Um, he knows how to diet for a show. He knows how to get in shape for a show. He knows his body. Um, and him looking how he looked at the Pittsburgh Pro was no indication of how he's going to look at the Olympia um, because he knows how to get in shape for the Olympia. He's proved that he's won the Olympia. Um, he's been top three at the Olympia multiple times. Sean knows what he's doing, and that should go without saying. So he makes that very good point that the proof is in the pudding, but he also has a good point that you know the reason why he does this is because he has a family. And he takes his health very seriously. So he does what he needs to do in the offseason to accomplish what he feels is taking care of his health and spending time with his family. Um, and if that means maybe stepping away from some of the elements of the pro bodybuilding lifestyle that might not be as healthy. Um, and he talks about getting blood work twice before he steps on stage again um, in the process of his offseason being, you know, a very health centric. And after hearing Sean say that, I actually really respect that. And I really think people you know, should be more understanding of what Sean Roden is trying to do. The fact that he's trying to take care of his health and maybe as a result of that, he's not looking the best at you know, some guest posing you know, six months out from the Olympia. If that's the sacrifice he has to make to be healthy, that he's not going to look that good at a guest posing, then so be it. I mean, who really cares? It's a guest posing. And like Sean says over and over again, you know, he's not being judged at the Pittsburgh Pro. He's being judged in September on the Olympia stage. That's all that really matters. The Pittsburgh Pro, it's just a guest posing. And Sean also makes a good point in that interview saying, you know, he's seen Sean Ray, you know, pictures of Sean Ray where Sean Ray looked fat at, at guest posing. And Sean Ray was making it sound like in that interview that Sean Ray would never do something like that. Um, if he were doing a guest posing, he would never show up looking like that. When in fact, Sean Ray has showed up looking very similar to that. So it's roughly a 35 minute interview, um, but I think it's a very good interview. I think it's certainly worth watching. But the main summary of that interview is him responding to the criticism that he got for that guest posing and saying, look, I'm putting my health first. That's why I do this. I've done this many, many times. I've proven that I know what I'm doing because I've done this in the past and still won the Olympia. So it's like he doesn't understand why people are calling him out for this. And I think really if more bodybuilders were able to do this and do what Sean Roden is doing, then they should do it too. Now, granted, not everyone has the genetics and the physique of Sean Roden. They could be able to turn their bodies around that quickly like Sean can. But if they could, I think more of them should. I think Sean is actually very blessed and very lucky to have that ability to turn his physique around that quickly and do what he's able to do in such a short period of time and be able to give his body that break and that rest that it needs. Now, granted, I'm not fully aware of the extent that he quote unquote takes off from professional bodybuilding in the off season, you know, what drugs he gets off, if any, you know, how, how much he falls back on the training, how much he falls back on the diet, um, or what exactly the extent is that he actually rests and focuses on health. But I'm assuming it's a pretty good extent based on the physique that we saw in Pittsburgh and the guest posing he did um, a week or two ago, the most recent one where he looked much, much better. I think he's proven how quickly he can turn things around and that it's really no indicator of how he's going to look at the Olympia. And he also says in the interview, he's coming to win, which of course he's a, he's a defending Mr. Olympia. Of course he's coming to win. And then Sean also addresses the other criticism that he's been getting, which of course is before he won the Olympia, he had a lot to say about Phil Heath, seven time Mr. Olympia, not doing a lot for bodybuilding as Mr. Olympia during those seven years that he was reigning Mr. Olympia. And the criticism that Sean's been getting is, well, what have you done since you won the Olympia? Which Sean makes a very good point there as well. He's been Mr. Olympia for less than a year. And then he goes on to talk about what his travel schedule has been like since he won the Olympia in September, basically traveling all over the world multiple times a month, every month since the Olympia. Um, so he kind of laughs off the idea that he hasn't done anything for bodybuilding since he won the Olympia. And again, it's only been less than a year and Phil had it for seven years. So he makes a good point there. And I think even Jay Cutler was one of the people that was criticizing Sean and saying Sean could have done more as Mr. Olympia to promote the Olympia, to promote, pr promote bodybuilding. Um, and I kind of agree with that to an extent. I mean, I actually do think Sean has been a really good ambassador for the Mr. Olympia. I've seen his social media. I see in the comment sections on his Instagram page, he's very, very engaging with his fans. He tries to reply to as many comments as possible. Um, anytime that I've ever DM Sean, he's always responded to me very, very quickly. He's always been very, very nice to me. Um, and I really appreciate that. I think Sean has done a lot as far as being a good ambassador and being nice to fans and responsive to fans and interactive with fans. And that aspect, I think he's done a very good job. Now, as far as making more public appearances and doing more things that are in a really big mainstream eye, yes, he's traveled for sure. 
But a lot of the things they talked about doing in that interview are things that we didn't really see him do. I mean, yeah, he did them, but they weren't things that were really that big in the public eye or in the social media eye that people really knew about him. But overall, I think Sean's response was pretty good. I think he had some pretty good you know, statements to make about that criticism. And I think his response was fair. And I think the fact that he's focusing on his health is also very fair as well. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today is another hint that Phil Heath might be making a possible comeback to the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Um, a lot of people are sending me screenshots of this story. Now, granted, Phil has me blocked from his stories. He doesn't have me blocked from his page, but he has me blocked from his story, so I couldn't see these, but people were still sending me screenshots. Um, There's one particular story where he was doing cardio, um, and the caption said, got to set the incline to the perfect level, and of course, the level was set to eight. And a lot of people were speculating he was indicating that would mean an eighth Mr. Olympia title. Of course, he's already won seven and would be going for eight in 2019, which I'm sure a lot of us would like to see. And I think the interesting thing, you know, one of Phil's biggest criticisms of the Olympia was the way they didn't really promote him that well. Um, they promoted Big Rami in the past and didn't really give Phil much publicity going into the Olympia. And I think Phil is absolutely right about that. And that's why I've been more positive towards Phil um, in the past couple of videos that I've made talking about whether or not he's going to do the 2019 Mr. Olympia, because I, for one, want to see him do it. I think it would be exciting. I think it would be interesting. I think it would make the whole show better. More people would watch it. Um, Phil being at the Olympia would be more exciting. That's just the fact of the matter. Whether people like him or dislike him, whether he has the gut or not, Phil being there is good for everybody involved and it's good for the Olympia. And I want to see that happen. So I want to promote it and I want to promote the possibility of Phil being there. I mean, I've had my problems with Phil in the past, but I mean, come on. We all want to see Phil at the Olympia, regardless of how we feel about him. Phil, he's seven-time Mr. Olympia. It doesn't get more exciting than seeing him come back and try to get that eighth title. So let me know what you guys think about these stories in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.